Welcome to LT Outdoors, the channel with everything the outdoor world has to offer. Gotta be an 11. Wow, wow. I've never seen one that big. <laughs> Sun oh is God. coming up, Bob is going down. Look at that. Fish are all abiding and jumping all around. Let's hook up the boat, come on, let's go. It's time for LT Outdoors, I'm talking. LT Outdoors. Might go hunting, fishing, metal detecting. Might even do a little fortune too, I'm talking. LT Outdoors. I hope you enjoy the show. Get a load of that. Okay guys, now I'm gonna show you how to do the beaver. All you need for that is a knife. I don't know how to flesh and dry those. I'm just showing you how to skin them. First thing I do, I cut off the tail. big tail look at that almost as big as that 54 pounder okay next thing I do just like the muskrat I go around the front legs again break them I usually just twist these because obviously the beaver is a little hard to break than a muskrat <laughs> Now these are kind of tricky to skin, I ain't gonna lie. Um, I've got the hang of it, but they're right up there, you know. I think the hardest, in my opinion, is a badger. Probably close second would be an otter, and then I'd say beaver. At least out of the animals that I do. You know, I don't know about Martin, Fisher, Wolverine, any of that. I'm sure Wolverine's just as hard as a badger, if not harder. I cut around the back legs, except this time, you know, we left them on for the muskrat. We're gonna take them right off. We don't need them. We don't need leverage on the beaver. Uh, it probably helps to have uh, clippers instead. I do it by hand not easy uh, if you had some cutters it'd be better okay same thing with the other one I've never really targeted them much in my life and before today and it's been many years my record was eight when I targeted them last, I was only like 19, and I got eight and thought that was good, but I think this year, we're gonna blow that number away. Hoping to get like 20 of them. All right, next step, guys. I'm gonna take a seat. I got a bad back, so I gotta sit down. All right, I cut from the lip. Keep your knife straight up. You want this cut to be as straight as you can get it down the belly you're gonna cut all the way down to the vent Be careful down by the vent because there's a gland I'm going to show you how to save and you don't want to mess that up. Now when you get to the vent, I recommend that you go make your cuts going around it. Obviously you don't want the vent in your skin, just like you don't want the anal vent on anything else. So I just make my cuts to get that right out of there. Now 
then cut straight down to the tail just like that okay next take your time don't cut crazy because you don't want to make a hole but you just skin it normally you'd be able to peel the skin off of you know let's say a raccoon or muskrat but beavers have very tough skin so it's easiest just to cut it and this is what you call open cased you're doing the skin so that it's all gonna be wide open it's gonna look like a blanket when you're all done now the front legs can be a bit of a booger I'll show you what I do when I get down to there actually all the legs can really but I'm, I make little extra cuts along the leg just to get the skin excess skin and tendons broke up uh, once I get a little ways then I'll flip it and start working on the other side just do one side at a time really not that hard people you just it's a matter of being careful with your cuts you don't want to you know again it's easiest if you don't split the guts open just got more work to do if you do um, but just take your time Try to skin, you know, get the skin off of the entire animal. It used to take me about an hour to do this. I'm down to like usually around 15, 20 minutes. Which is pretty dang good. See that extra cutting right there, just make sure that that excess skin and membrane gets off the leg. This kind of stuff here. Because otherwise it's even harder to pull that off the skin. Now, like I said, I don't flesh and dry them. I don't have everything to do that. It takes extra tools. Um, but what I do, and what I've always done, I just roll them up. I usually roll them up and freeze them in a garbage bag. But I just realized I didn't know they sold two gallon Ziploc freezer bags. They seem to be, I don't know if this guy will fit in there because he's so big, but they seem to be pretty dang good for coons and smaller beaver. These front legs can be hard. Once you get your, once you get the foot through the hole, it's easier, but it's just such a tough, mm, tough skin to pull. It's probably the most time consuming parts are the, the legs and the face. Just gotta keep working it, get it all the way off. finger through and it's off just like that there's the foothold that I made see you can't even I mean it's tough you anything else you can pull the pull on it and get the skin to let loose but you got a lot more cutting to do on a beaver 
which is a little scary, especially when you first start out because it's so easy to cut and make holes. But practice makes perfect, guys. Back leg's not usually as hard as the front. I think it's because it's bigger. You got a bigger hole. Get a lot of meat off this back legs. I really like the back quarters and the and the back strap. You get some nice meat off of these. See, the skin won't even peel, but the meat will let loose. That's pretty tough. Okay. I'll rip some more of this off of the tail here. Again, be careful because you're glands are right there. The glands are worth more money than the beaver. I really don't want to mess those up. through here. Just peel the tail fur off there.
so hard to cut them out. It's so hard to rip that skin. On the plus side, it's that hard to cut through it too, so at least you got You know it ain't easy to cut through. Legs are off. Now flip it. I need a better work table. It's hard to do these bigger animals on this little patio table. Keep peeling it off, guys. Work your way all around the animal. There will be light at the end of the tunnel. Eventually, you're excited because all of a sudden it just comes right off. You won't even be expecting it. <laughs> you end up not knowing whereabouts you're at, and then it comes right off. all off of the rest of the body now I just got to get the head cut the ear canal didn't even realize it you just gotta because you don't know where you're at with it you just kind of stay as close to the bone as you can especially around the face because you know you got the eyes coming and a lot of important <clears throat> little holes the eye hole because it's tightening up really tight right here yep, another ear hole the eyes got one here and the other one <clears throat> the other one will be right on the other 
other side there. Now you don't want that to go in the dirt. That's never good. That is it, folks. This is what this is what it'll look like when you're done. That is a nice beaver blanket right there. That's a big one. Oh, I'm gonna roll that up, skin, so that it's all rolled with the skin, and then I'm gonna freeze it in a bag. I'm gonna show you how to remove the uh, glands. This guy's got some big glands, I can tell already. Um, I like to start by just cutting away some of this excess real careful too don't you don't want to cut the gland that right there is the gland this purpley almost like a brain that is what you call the castor gland like I said earlier that is worth more than the animal itself so you want to save these and I'm showing you how um, I talked to my fur buyer and asked for his input on how he wants them. Okay. And this is how he said to do it. Um, when you remove them, you want to get as much meat off of them as you can because they weigh them and you'll get docked in price, you know, depending on how much stuff you leave behind on them. There is a vent you don't want to cut too big of a hole on up at the end here. Yep, this was another male. You can see the vent right there, some of that yellow sticking out. That's the caster. It's actually pretty good smelling stuff. It's not, you know, you expect glands to stink especially because you're used to if you smell skunk glands and stuff like that but no nope. caster has a pleasant smell yeah just carefully carefully cut these out they'll be stuck together they stay that way um, So don't try tearing them apart, that'll ruin it. That'll make a big old hole. Okay. Yep, that's the, that's the end right there. Okay. Now, <clears throat> just get this excess meat off. That's all you gotta do. I'm not even gonna, I mean, I'll show you. Just carefully, you know, I pull it up, pull it out. Think of it like you're filleting a fish, really. 
you're basically filleting this little bitty bits of meat off because the cleaner you get this the better chance you got of making top dollar on your glands which you know as hard as the economy is right now I want to make top dollar on whatever work I'm putting into so this meat now after you get all this cleaned up you're gonna want to hang these um, some people nail them in their barn you can do that if you have a barn or a garage or a shed just nail them to the wall put a little not a big nail but just a little nail um, after four days of hanging letting them dry you want to flip them because they'll, the one side will dry more than the other if they're up against the wall. So after four days, flip them, and then uh, four more days, you flip them, or after four more days, they're ready to go. Um, and then after that, you put them in a jar, and you put them in the freezer. And then uh, before you go to sell, I recommend hanging them again, pulling them out, thawing them out, and hanging them because you always end up with some frost buildup so it, they're not exactly dry at that point in time, but it's not hard to you know, hang them for another day or so. But that right there, folks, that's a big caster gland. Yep, I'm just gonna work on getting this last little bit of meat off of there and that's ready to hang up. Outdoors has been brought to you by RBM Jigs and Lake Effect Lure Co. Everything for the serious ice fishermen. Sportsman's Connection, mapping the outdoors since 1992. Wellman's Bait and Tackle, check them out in Oscoda, Michigan. Cowboy Coffee Chew, a cup and a pinch. Crooked Ben, the leader for food plot mixes here in Michigan. And Bass Brother Lures and Baits on Facebook. Excellent trapping lures and baits. And Shelly's Shirt Shack, where all the LT Outdoors merchandise is made.